Hi guys, Tracy here. Welcome back to the sewing channel and welcome to class number three. In today's lesson, we are going to learn about the different types of fabrics, about the grain line, the straight stitch, and the zigzag stitch. You won't want to miss a thing in today's class. Let's get started. The first thing we are going to talk about is salvage. Well, salvage is the term used in the fabric world. All it means is the machine, when it made this fabric, it was connected on two ends and those ends never fray. And that end is called the salvage end. So you're going to have two salvage ends on fabric that you need to understand. This end and this end connects on the machine when it weaves it, when it manufactures it, and those are called salvage and those never fray. This stuff in the middle, this is called the width. So you have salvage, salvage, and your width is in the middle. Now when you go to the fabric store, you pick out some pretty fabric and you take it up to the worker, they cut it, right? So this right here, the width of the fabric is what they cut never cut along the salvage edge, neither one of them, ever. They only cut along the width of the fabric. Now the width could come in different measurements. Let's talk about the different fabrics now that you understand salvage. This first one that we're going to talk about is knit fabric. Now I want you to see something. On knit fabric or jersey fabric, it has some stretch. This end, not so much, but when you go this way, it ha does have stretch. Now you would use this in t-shirts or possibly a skirt even. This salvage edge is a little different. Do you see how it rolls? See how that rolls? It rolls toward the back of the fabric. This is the pretty side of the fabric. And then this is the inside of the fabric. There is always a right side and a wrong side to fabric. In order to tell the difference on knit, the salvage side tends to roll toward the back, knowing that this then is the right side of the fabric. Now I want you to take note though. Look at the cut side. Remember the width we talked about? This is the salvage, it was connected to the machine, and then this is the width of the fabric. This is what the worker would cut for you. I want you to notice something it actually rolls toward the good side of the fabric and not toward the back. Say you're making a t-shirt, well, you wouldn't want to make it inside out, would you? No, not at all. So you need to know the difference between the right and the wrong side and what each fabric does. Let's talk about the salvage of this right here. Now this is a quilter's cotton. It's 100% cotton, and this is what quilters prefer in their quilts. When you go into a fabric store, you will see a lot of quilter's cotton. What I want you to notice here is the salvage. You see, it doesn't fray at all. Now look over here. This is the cut end, so remember? See the fraying? So that is where the worker cut it. This is the salvage. This is where the machine connected each of these ends and then the width was in the middle. But the main thing I want you to know is the right and wrong side of the fabric. See right here is the pretty side and this is the inside of the fabric or the wrong side of the fabric. Big difference, right? Let's talk about this fabric. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? I don't know yet what I'm going to use this one on, but I can't wait to use it. It sure is pretty. On this one, I want you to note, look at this salvage edge. It actually has where it was made, who made it, and what the collection is. And I want you to take note right here. Do you see these dots? All those colors. That is every color that was used to manufacture this fabric for this print. Now that is handy and helpful, and let me tell you why. Say you had curtains. Say you wanted to make a pillowcase, and you wanted the throw pillow to go in your living room, and you wanted it to match your curtains. Well, say your curtains were this color right here, blue. You would go to these dots, 
and you would say, oh, that's the same color that's in my curtains. So you would go ahead and buy this knowing that that was the same color tone or same color scheme that you already had that you wanted to match up with. So that is super handy and helpful. And I want you to take note of the pretty side and the wrong side or the right side and the wrong side of this fabric. If I lift this up, it's pretty light on that side. So this would be a fabric that I would want to be careful if I was using it to note the wrong side and the right side. Now this right here is called batik. Now batik fabric is a little different. Not only is it very beautiful, but it has no right or wrong side. You could use this fabric and it doesn't even really matter which side you use because some fabric you have to look really close. But this one, nope, not at all. You could rest assured in using either side, but I want you to note on the salvage here, you can't even tell where it ends and where it starts. So this was the side that was connected to the machine. And then again, this was the cut side and it does fray, see? And this side does not fray. This right here is a very beautiful decor fabric. Now decor fabric is thicker and heavier and more durable. You could use this on some outdoor furniture pillows. You could use this on pillows in your living room. The main thing I want you to notice about this salvage, it's got frayed edges. It also has the name of the collection and who it was made by. This was the side that was connected to the machine. I want you to notice the wrong side of this fabric. Ready? Wow, now that is a huge difference. I don't think anybody's gonna get the right and wrong sides wrong on that one. Here is a picture of all of the things that we just talked about. Now I recommend that you screenshot it and keep it in your photos and refer to it as needed. This right here is a pattern piece. When you buy a pattern for garments, a skirt or a top possibly, you will get something in your package like this. It's like tissue paper. Now this one happens to be a lower sleeve of something that I will probably never make. On this pattern piece right here, there is something called the grain line. Now it says grain line right there. They give it to you on every pattern piece that has to deal with clothing. So you get your pattern from the store and you've bought your fabric and you lay everything out and you lay your pattern piece on your fabric. And you need to make sure that this grain line lines up with the grain line on your fabric. Now, the big question, how do you know where your grain line is on your fabric? Let's talk about it. Here's your grain line. We come home, we have our fabric, we fold it together, we fold our salvage edges together just like the pattern says to do. And we know what our salvage edge is because we learned about salvage edge. We know that those were connected to the machine. We get this pattern piece. It says grain line. This is what I want you to know. That salvage edge right there is parallel to the grain line. So this arrow right here, that arrow right there follows the grain line. So that tells me that when I lay this pattern piece out before I cut it, it needs to run straight up and down this way, right along here. Let's pretend I came home and I laid it this way. Here's my salvage edge, and remember the grain line falls along the salvage edge. But say I said, well, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna lay it this way, and I'm gonna put the arrow that way. Well, guess what's gonna happen? <laughs> you are gonna have some very poorly fitting clothes. If the clothes that you are making right now don't fit you right, or it's just pulling or tugging in this direction or that direction, you probably did not lay it how it was supposed to lay 
along the grain line parallel with the grain line. So that's all the grain line is. And you're gonna need to know that if you are going to sew or make your own clothes. We're going to go ahead and turn our machine on. The first stitch that we are going to learn how to do is a straight stitch. Now right now I have mine is zero zero and this is what it looks like when it comes up. I am going to go to zero one and do this straight stitch. So hopefully you can see this. There's already a zero there so I'm going to go ahead to one. We're going to go ahead and keep it at the factory setting that it is right there. We are going to just practice. When I first bought my machine, all I did was practice because I really just wanted to learn my machine and how things went because it was so foreign to me. Right now, I'm just gonna take two woven uh, white pieces of cotton. They're just 100% cotton, that's all they are. There's nothing special about this fabric. This is how I want you to practice. You are going to put these fabrics together as if you were going to do a seam. So I'm just going to line them up together just like that, nothing special. And I'm going to go ahead, if your presser foot is down, you're gonna go ahead and lift your presser foot up. And I just want you to slide those two under there just like that. Just so it's past where the needle is and the edge of the first edge of the fabric that goes in there just like that, and I want you to line it up with the side here. And then I just want you to put that down like that. And go ahead and drop your needle. One of the first things that I did wrong when I first started sewing was to stare at the needle as it sewed, as it went up and down. That is the worst thing you can do. I wish someone would have told me that when I first started sewing. So I'm going to pass that information on to you. When you sew, you need to look at your guide. You need to look at something so that you don't go way off. You could look at this little notch that's in the middle there. You could look at the edge here of your foot, but you never want to look at the needle going in and out or you will totally mess up. I am going to watch this side of my presser foot, just the edge there, and I'm just going to keep my fabric just under there. And that is what I'm gonna focus at. My eyes are gonna be there. My eyes are not gonna be on this needle, trust me. Otherwise, you will mess up. You just need to get it right, right now, and not do that. Our hands are here, nice and light. Our presser foot's down, our needle's down. My foot is on the pedal and ready to go. This right here, remember we learned in lesson one, or was it two? I can't remember now. <laughs> slow and fast. So I'm gonna put it on slow and that's what you should start on. Everybody starts on slow. And I'm gonna go ahead, lightly put my hands here. Now I'm gonna put my foot pedal down and my needle's gonna start. And again, I am not looking at the needle. I am looking right here. I am not looking there. I will mess up if I look there. I'm gonna look right here and I'm just gonna guide my fabric in. Now nice and light and I'm guiding and I'm guiding my fabric in. I know it seems slow at first, but just try to master this nice and slowly. I'm not pushing my fabric in and I'm not yanking it back. I'm just lightly guiding it. Just guiding it as I stare right here. Now let's see what we got so far. So I'm gonna stop, hands off. You're gonna press your button to lift up. You're going to lift your presser foot up and then you're going to pull your fab fabric with the thread still on it and you're gonna go ahead and clip that. Nice, nice. Now I forgot to tell you, remember we learned about tension. Just keep that dial right in the middle between three and five or whatever middle yours is on your machine. But that is a very nice stitch, very nice. Let's try this. Let's open up our length as high as it'll go and let's open up our width as wide as it'll go. And it says 5.0 and 7.0. 
So now what I'm going to do is, I am now going to take the line that we just did with the short straight stitch, and I'm going to line my foot up right along there. There. So the line is gonna be on the outside. Now that's what I'm gonna be looking at. Again, I'm not gonna be looking at my needle. I'm gonna be looking right here, and I'm gonna be following along. All right, nice and easy, my hands are ready, and I press my foot pedal down. And I'm not looking at my needle. No, I'm not. I am looking at my guide right here. And I'm just going nice and easy and slow. Again, I'm not pushing and I'm not pulling. I'm just nice and easy. That messed up a little bit when I did that. But that's okay, because this is practice. All right, so let's stop. Put your needle up. You're going to lift your presser foot up. Pull out your fabric and, and your thread should come and you're going to go ahead and snip that off. Now let's take a look at the stitches that those made. That made a wider stitch. See I can stick that up there and go back and forth in this one there's no way because those stitches are so close together. So I hope you can see that difference. It's really hard to see on there. And I want you to practice, practice, practice we're gonna go here. Now you are going to use your zigzag a lot. I use zigzag a lot in sewing. So on mine, it's zero, four. And I'm, it's already on zero, so I'm gonna go one up to four. So now that tells my machine that I am going to sew a zigzag. And there's the width and the length. We'll do a small one at first and then we'll do a big one. Sewing is so much fun, it's just crazy. So now let's get all this thread, because if you don't get all this thread out of the way, sometimes that just, it will get caught. So just make sure you clip all your strays, because you don't want to get them caught in your machine or down in your needle and all that. So Now we're gonna do a very small zigzag. So I'm just gonna come out here and I am going to use the edge of that last stitch that we did. I'm just going to come right inside that and I, I'm gonna be watching on my presser foot. That's gonna be my guide. Remember, I'm not looking at my needle. All right, ready? Hands here and foot on the gas. And I'm just guiding my material. I almost forget what it's like to go this slow, guys. I'm so used to sewing so fast now, I never thought I'd get to that. But I know you can do it. You can get to that point. I just know it, just keep going. foot off, put my needle up, lift up my presser foot, pull that out, clip that. Check this out, guys. That is so cool, right? So now what we're going to do is we are going to go over here to our stitch length and we're gonna go the most it'll go and we are going to go the most width that it'll go and mine's a 4.0 and a 7.0. So let's see about that one. And let's see what we come up with. And we're just guiding with our hands very lightly. Like I'm not even touching it. Like it could seriously sew on its own, maybe not. But you know, just guide it, that's all. And I'm watching my guide. I'm not looking at the needle. If I were to look at the needle, I don't know where I would be at right now on this uh, piece of fabric. So lift up. And we're going to clip that. Check that out, guys. That is so cool, right? What I want you to do is just practice these stitches. 
Just practice over and over and over again. And soon enough, before you know it, you will be well on your way. I hope you learned a lot in today's lesson. I so look forward to the next lesson. Take care until then.